Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Now, I'm not sure how many of you know how I earn my living, because I do get the occasional email saying, Neil, this is great you do a daily tech podcast, but how do you make money? Now, for those of you that don't know, I write tech articles for online publications, and I ghostwrite tech articles for business leaders, and also help businesses manage their own tech blogs, and help people launch their own podcast too. And I'm currently managing the production of around 15 podcasts, but... There is nobody else. There's no assistance. I manage everything myself. I spin a lot of plates. So today I wanted to explore the world of virtual assistance. And John Jonas has helped thousands of entrepreneurs succeed in their business by simply doing outsourcing differently. But I wanted to find out more about the story behind what made him create the world's largest website for finding Filipino virtual assistants. Because onlinejobs.ph now has over 500,000 resumes. And John has also hosted a series of webinars and he's, been a, and he's been a guest on multiple podcasts that you might listen to, including Entrepreneur on Fire, ClickFunnels, Hack the Entrepreneur, all the usual suspects. But all of that, of course, was just a warm-up for today, at least. <laughs> That's what I try and convince myself. So enough for me. Let's get John onto the podcast now. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Yeah, my name is John Jonas, and I run an online job board for the Philippines. So here in the U.S., it would be like Indeed.com, but it's for international employers around the world looking to hire a virtual, virtual worker from the Philippines. So that's a little bit of what I do as far as personally. I am, I'm married. I have five kids. Uh, they're ages six to 17. Um, so I'm a dad and a husband and I love to ride my bike with my kids and my wife and to my kids race mountain bikes. And so we ride a lot and I golf and I work about 17 hours a week and run my business. And yeah, that's me. Wow, 17 hours a week. That sounds like a dream. And you are talking to me today from Utah. So I've got to ask before we delve in to your story a little more, is, is what put you on this path? Because obviously you're in Utah and you're, you've you got this online jobs.ph with over 500,000 Filipino resume, resumes on there. But where, how did you get where you are today? So years and years ago, as I started, I was I was in my mid twenties and I thought I was invincible, obviously. And so <laughs> I, 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 I'm not a good employee. And so I quit my job cause I was going to make money online and, and do it differently than other people. Like I, I'm not going to work so much. And, you know, obviously that's, I mean, it's silly. I, like I thought I knew everything and, and it didn't take me very long to realize that oh yeah, I'm working like crazy and this is really hard and there's just not enough time in the day to get everything done. And so I was super frustrated. So I tried hiring people locally and as soon as they realized, oh, I was making money online, the first thing they did was quit because they were like, oh, I can do this. Yeah. Um, so I tried hiring someone in India to help me and that didn't work. And I, I, don't, I won't get into the details. I think just a lot of people have had the same experience where like it, it just is very hard in India. Yeah. Um, and then I tried hiring off of Elance, which Elance today is Upwork. They merged with Odesk years ago and became Upwork. And, and the issue there for me, I, I was so excited when I started it that it was like, I, I found someone that can help me to, to get some stuff done. And, and they did some work. They wrote some articles for me and they sent them to me and I paid them because that's how it works. And then I like the burden fell on me and I realized, oh, they wrote these articles. Now I have to go and do everything else that goes along with them. All of the submitting and the resource boxes and the headlines and the, the, the links and the whole thing. And, I, and it was just so painful to me because that's not what I wanted to do. I, wa- I wanted to have someone write the articles and post them and do the linking and write another one and link it to the other one. You know, I wanted to do the whole process and, and I just hadn't found that. And I was so frustrated and, 
so I had a conversation with a guy who like a really good business dude. And he said to me, you know, when you really start outsourcing some of this stuff, make sure you go to the Philippines with it. And I was like, huh? Like that's, cause I just figured outsourcing is outsourcing. It sucks. At the, I mean, like it, it, it doesn't matter what you do. Like it sucks. That was my uh, experience at this point. And he was like, no, it's, it's different in the Philippines. And he gave me a reference to where I could hire someone. And I, and I, you know, I waffled. I went back and forth for like two months of, I don't know if I can afford someone. He, he told me where I could hire someone full time. And, you know, I don't know if they can do good work. I don't know if I can keep them busy full time. And, and finally, I, I got to the point where I said, it doesn't matter. Like, I can't keep doing what I'm currently doing because it, it, it's just not working. Like, I can't keep working 60 hours a week knowing that there's more to do and, and I just don't have time to do it. So I ended up taking the leap. I hired this guy full time, single most liberating experience of my life where all of a sudden I had this guy whose full-time job was to do anything I asked him to do, anything I was willing to teach him to do. And within a couple of months, he, he was doing the entire system of what I had hired that guy off of Elance to do, writing the articles and posting the articles and linking the articles and the, the whole thing. And that was in 2005. And I've never touched that process since. And so that's, that's kind of, uh, and that's how I got started with the Philippines uh, and it changed my life. And people started asking me about it. How are you doing this? How are you doing this? How, why is it working? How's it, you know, like constant people asking. So finally I recorded, I recorded myself talking for 45 minutes, explaining everything I knew at the time, which wasn't very much. And, <laughs> and I put it out there and demand for it just went crazy. Like everybody wanted to know. And so yeah, that's where I that's how I got started here. Fantastic. Great story. And here in 2020, of course, your website onlinejobs.ph has over five hundred thousand Filipino resumes and over a hundred thousand employees from all around the world that are using it. But for anyone hearing about it for the first time, can you tell me a little bit more about the company and the technology that makes it all possible? Yeah, so when I was recruiting back then, there was no way to find, there were, there were no Filipino resumes. Like I, I wanted to hire another person in the Philippines. So I went to this agency that, that, I, that this guy had given me a reference to. And, and they said to me, well, do you want a webmaster or a programmer? And I was like, I don't want either of those. I want a content writer. They said, well, do you want a webmaster or a programmer? And I'm like, well, ah, I'll, take a, I'll take a webmaster. Right. And, and after doing that a couple of times, I wanted to recruit someone on my own. And so I thought, you know, I think I could build a job board where I could maybe get a couple hundred resumes of Filipino workers in there. And then I could recruit someone on my own. So I, I graduated from college in computer science and I started writing, uh, I started writing some code and I quickly realized like, I don't, it's like programming, writing code, doesn't make it makes it really hard to run a business if you're writing code and so i went back to them and said hey i want a programmer and they gave me a programmer and i had him build the system and technology wise like we use php and mysql and linux and it was it, it wasn't like it, it wasn't super complicated right yeah. and um so we built the system and hundreds of people joined in the first month and then thousands started joining. And so um, the big thing in today's world is like, it's a global economy and there's no reason why you can't leverage the internet and the Zoom calls like we're doing right now and email and a project manager system. I, I use Basecamp to communicate with all of the people in the Philippines that work for me. And, it, it, and so I'm getting all this extra work done people doing stuff for me that is not, it's not in my office. I don't have an office. I work from home. Um, it's on the other side of the world. And yet the technology of the internet just completely allows it to be seamless as if they're in my office. 
And since doing that, you've now helped thousands of entrepreneurs succeed in their business by doing outsourcing differently. But I'm curious, what is it that you think that you guys do that is so different to everyone else out there? So there's a couple of things. Number, I mean, we've helped, we, gosh, I've seen so many thousands of businesses succeed because they do this differently. So traditionally, the, the advice is go to, eat, go to Upwork and hire a contractor. And if you hire a contractor, then your risk is super low. Or hire someone hourly, because then if they're not busy, then you're not paying for their time. And so your risk is super low, so you can keep concentrating on whatever you want to concentrate on. And and the other, and then the other piece of advice that's super typical is outsource the things that you don't know how to do and focus on the things that you're good at. And I think for, for 95% of people, that's terrible. It's terrible advice. Um, if you're really good at making sales, then yeah, outsource the other things that you don't know how to do and focus on making sales because that's what grows your business. But if making sales isn't what you're really good at, then that's what you need to be focusing on is making sales. And for almost all small businesses or entrepreneurs, if you're good at social media marketing, you should not be doing social media marketing because that's not what makes sales. If you're good at programming, you should not be doing programming. Uh, if you, you know, like if you're a good writer, you should be supervising someone else doing the writing and you should be running your business as a CEO. And so what I tell people to do, what's different is hire someone full-time, make the commitment. Uh, to someone full-time because it, it's not just a commitment to them. It's also a commitment to yourself that you are going to, when that person isn't busy, you're going to step away from your business and stop answering emails, which is so time consuming and not productive, profitable. And you're going to be forced into working on your business and coming up with systems and processes that that person can do for you instead of constantly working in your business. And so kind of what I, what I discovered for myself was if I hire someone hourly and they're not busy, if, if they run out of tasks to do, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. And, and I can just keep working in business. If I hire someone full-time and they're salaried, then if they run out of tasks to do, I do care. And now I have to work on my business to keep them productive. Even though their time is only like three or $4 an hour, I still have to work on my business and that changes, that changes the way you succeed in your business. When, when you're able to work on instead of work in, it's such a big deal. Uh, if someone is working in the heart of this space, what are the most common tasks that you're finding that people are outsourcing to your virtual assistants? Yeah, so, so I'll give you a couple things. Um, first, uh, conceptually, anything that can be done online or on the phone or on the computer can be outsourced. And, and that's what we see. So... Uh, in reality, I have, I'll tell you about myself. I have 26 virtual assistants in the Philippines and they do, they're full time and they do things from programming to design work to like webmaster work or front end stuff. Uh, they do database design. They do content creation, writing, blogging. Uh, they do social media posting and marketing, paid social media stuff, uh, Google AdWords or Google ads. They do Google ads for me. They do customer support. They do um, admin work for me. Uh, they, I have an HR person. I have a video editor. I have someone that does transcriptions. So like, I mean, we have attorneys and doctors and insurance agents and realtors and brick and mortar businesses and uh, e-commerce entrepreneurs and like Google is using online jobs.ph and Uber and uh, like every every person from every every industry is is finding people to do to do work for them t-shirt design and logo design and um, you know, like high-end programming and low-level programming and, yeah, all, all of it. So for anyone listening that wants to dip their toes in this in these waters, when should they hire a virtual assistant? Is there anything that they should be looking out for that are, are big signals that they need one? Yeah. So 
So when should you, there, okay, so there's two, two, step, two signs here. Number one, you're working too much, right? That's a, that's a pretty dang good sign. Um, <laughs> and I often get people saying like, oh, I don't have time to hire a virtual assistant. Like, yeah, that, you, you need, that's exactly right. You don't have time, which means if you don't do this, you're never going to have time, right? So that's, that's like the first sign of it. The second sign is a more, is a more direct one, is a more concrete thing. Um, as soon as you have something that you know how to do in your business, you know why you're doing it and, and you're pretty good at it and you feel like you could teach it to someone else, that's a pretty dang good sign. You need, some, you need to hire someone else to do that thing for you. So for, for me at the time, this was uh, writing articles and submitting them to article sites and getting links and doing SEO for, for my website. And I was pretty good at it. And I felt like I could teach someone else to do this. And so that I hired them and I taught them and it, it wasn't perfectly smooth. It took me a couple of weeks to teach them how to do it correctly. And like iteration after iteration of like, no, let's write the articles like this and let's do the linking like this. And I had to teach them a bunch of stuff. But then that process was off of my plate forever, basically. And, and that's kind of a, a thing with the Philippines that, I, that we can talk about is why specifically the Philippines and why it allows you to do that. But uh, so, so when are you ready? When you have something that you know how to do that you could teach someone else, you're ready to hire someone. And many business owners, of course, dream of accomplishing that those time freedom moments, but struggle to get there or just feel that others cannot complete the task to their standard. And you did speak that you had similar experiences of that. So how did you overcome that hurdle? So I think partly it's built into me. <laughs> you know, it's a personality thing where I, I'm a good starter and not a good continuer, which is, frankly, it's not it's pretty common among entrepreneurs to be good starters and not good, not good managers. And so it was a really big deal for me to be able to start something like writing articles or like blogging or, you know, like editing a single video and then, and then to figure out like, okay, this, this is how this works. This is what I want to do. Now let me give it to someone else and hand this off. And, and what I realized early on was, you know, there's a quote that, Success is 90% showing up. If you just show up, you'll succeed 90% of the time, right? Yeah. And in my experience in running a business, implementation is 90% of success. It doesn't matter that it's implemented perfectly or the best way or as good as someone else. Uh, I, so I had a conversation the other day with someone who said, how do you do social media? How do you do social media marketing? And I said, I have no idea. I, I have no clue. I don't like Facebook. I don't have it on my phone. I don't, I don't get on uh, we have a Facebook account that has hundreds of thousands of likes and gets pretty good activity on it. And I've never made a single post. So how are we doing social media marketing? I don't know. I'm sure if like a social media marketing expert looked at our, our marketing, they'd be like, oh, you guys suck at this. But we showed up. Uh, we did it. And that's 90% of success uh, is just getting it done. And so what I, I figured out was, Oh, I can get someone else to do this stuff because I, I don't have time to do it all. And they're not doing it as well as I would like it done or as well as I think it could be done. It doesn't matter. It, we got in the 90%. And what are your favorite software tools or indeed web-based tools that make it actually easier for virtual assistants and entrepreneurs to collaborate seamlessly? Because there are so many different tools out there and that alone can feel overwhelming to a lot of people. Yeah, uh, that is such a good question. So I have... I have three things specifically. So number one, we use Basecamp to manage our business. Uh, I love Basecamp as a project management system. Um, I, it, it works the way my brain works, which is so awesome. And then it allows everybody, everyone else to communicate with Basecamp however they want to. If you just want to use email, just use email. If you want to use mobile, use mobile, right? So I love Basecamp. Number two, we use Google Docs a lot because it allows easy collaboration. So all of our content writing happens in Google Docs. Uh, and then so someone writes it, someone else edits it, they send it to me, I can look at it at any point or only at the end, and I can make changes and it's all, it's all live. There's no versions of this document, right? Um, and we use that for files and yeah, so Google Docs is a great one. And then the, the third thing, and this is really the game changer in working with virtual workers is I use Snagit 
which is screen capture, screen recording software uh, made by the makers of Camtasia Studio. Uh, and it, it sits open on your desktop. It, it, so you drag it out. It's going to record a part of your screen and it's going to record your mouse and your voice. And so when I discovered that I could do this and talk to my computer as if I'm talking to the person, uh, to my virtual assistant in the Philippines, um, it opened up a whole new world for me where instead of typing out something super, super long and trying to explain every little detail of where things are and how things fit, I could just show them exactly on the computer, exactly how it works, record it. And then the real magic of Snagit is that you, so when you're done, you click stop and you click upload and Snagit uploads it to a server for you, to the cloud for you. And it gives you the URL of that video or image. Uh, and then all you have to do is paste, like click paste in, in your email or in Basecamp or whatever. And your virtual assistant can immediately see exactly what you just described. And so Snagit uh, takes screenshots or videos you can annotate your screenshots. I, I, I use it, I don't know, I use it every single day, 10 times a day, 20 times a day, every single day. Um, because it sped up my communication with my virtual workers so much. Uh, and then it has other side consequences, like when they're, when they're not just getting an email, written text, they're getting to hear my voice. It builds their trust in me, which is a key, a key factor in Filipino performances if they trust you. Uh, so Snagit accomplished that. Uh, Snagit is like $50. It's a one-time purchase. Uh, another option, I just give this option because people like free, is Tiny Take. Tiny Take does all the same things as Snagit. Uh, it's not as refined as Snagit. It, it, Snagit's been around for a lot, a lot of years. And Tiny Take's pretty new, but it's free. So if, that, if that's the route you want to go, uh, Tiny Take works too. And for anyone that's thinking of hiring a virtual assistant, before they even go there, what questions should people be asking to ensure they find someone that is the right fit from the offset? So to find someone who's the right fit. Uh, so first of all, it, if you go and hire someone to do something you don't know how to do, like I don't know how to build a website, so I'm going to hire a webmaster or something like that. This is, this is really hard. I mean, if you don't know how to do it, it's really hard. But if you hire someone to do something you do know how to do, something you're currently doing in your business, all of a sudden finding the right person becomes so much easier because you know exactly what you're looking for. And as you start to interview people, which that's what this takes is you're hiring a long-term person. I'll just tell you that the first person I ever hired in 2005 still works for me today. Um, and, and that is a huge difference. So if you approach this with the, with the, perspective of I'm hiring a long-term worker that could work with me. Like, I mean, that guy that works for me, I would, I would never let him go. Uh, like if I sold a business and they wanted to take him with it, that would be a condition. No, he doesn't, he doesn't go with the business. Um, cause he's so dang good at this point. And, and I probably have 10 people like that, that I wouldn't let him go. Um, so if you take it from that perspective of like, I'm hiring a long-term person, all of a sudden in your recruiting, you can afford to do things that you would never do with a temporary worker, a contract worker, or an hourly worker that you know, like this is 100% turnover. Uh, contract work, that's exactly what it is. It's 100% turnover guaranteed. And so in, you want to guarantee you hire a great person, um, you're going to spend time in the recruiting process. You're going to ask lots of questions and you're going to Pay attention to their attention to detail, to their English skills, to their responsiveness, to their personality. Like, are you excited to get an email from this person or does this email from this person kind of make you cringe? Um, you know, like those are, those are good indicators of, of, is this going to work out with this person? Uh, most people, they're only concerned with technical skills. And that's, the, that's, in my experience, that's the wrong approach. Like you want to hire someone based on their fit and not based on their knowledge in any given thing. And for anyone listening that would like to continue this conversation, we started today and go even further here. And what's the best way of finding the website again and the best way of contacting your team? Is, is, can you just point everyone listening in the direction there? Yeah, so onlinejobs.ph is the, is the marketplace where you can find the workers. Um, if you want to continue this conversation, uh, I... I recently recorded my entire recruiting process, start to finish, 
like who you should hire, thinking through the process, what you do first, what you do second, every step of the way, what, how you hire them in the end. And I made it available at, at one, one vaoa.com. It's a seven day challenge. Uh, can you hire a great virtual assistant in seven days? And uh, my success rate with this is like 80%. Uh, so it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty high. And that, again, that's one vaoa.com where you can continue this conversation. You asked, how do people get in touch with my team? So I don't do social media, uh, but I am available through email. And if you use the contact link at any of my websites, one VAOA or, or onlinejobs.ph, it does, obviously it doesn't go to me. But if you say, hey, this is for John, then they know to immediately send it to me and I will respond to you personally. Excellent. Well, I'll add those links to the, the blog post that will accompany this episode. So much value in here because I think they often say now that time is the new currency. And I know from the people that I've spoke with, a lot of people are looking for virtual assistance, but it's finding that right person, that right fit. But if you can do that, then man, getting your freedom back and getting your productivity up, it's got to be a great thing. But more than anything, I love the story behind it all and you taking the time to come on here today. So thanks again for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It's so easy to see why John is highly sought after for his expertise on how to hire these rock star virtual assistants. And I loved hearing the story behind the company and how he's helping business owners accomplish time freedom and also helping talented individuals overcome these economic challenges that we're all facing. But what experiences have you had with virtual assistants? Now it's time to share your story. So please email me, techblogwriter at outlook.com. My website is techblogwriter.co.uk. Let me know your experiences, both good and bad, and I'll read them out on a future episode. And finally, a big thank you to everyone for putting up with me bombarding your feeds. I currently have 15 podcast episodes recorded, ready to go and 10 interviews booked in per week up until mid-July. So we've got a very nice problem on our hands. I'm passionate about giving everybody a voice out there. But the downside of that, of course, (laughs) means that your podcast feeds might get bombarded by me. I don't want to outstay my welcome, so I am trying to rein myself in as much as possible. But equally, I want to help you all. Hopefully we get that balance right. But let me know what you think. But that's it for today. I'll be back tomorrow. We've got another guest lined up. So a big thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.